Good morning and welcome to Buddha's in Your Landfill. Uh, the internet uh, has been down this morning, so I'm running a little late, but then what's late? I used to do it at 10, I started doing it at 8, now it's at 9, and we're here. And yesterday, we were talking about uh, and I, what I thought was a really great metaphor or map of uh, our journey in life, searching for Buddhas in the landfill. Okay, and uh, I drew two rivers. Well, let's, so let's pick, this is a little extension of yesterday, but we'll pick up here because I wanted to pull this out a little bit more because it really is a great, to me, a great overlay of uh, an understanding of our personal journey towards uh, self-discovery, uh, creativity, and happiness, and the feeling in it at one with, feeling at one with the world, and, uh, and grace. This is a religious term, but it, it also means uh, when the wind is in your sail, when suddenly your boat starts moving, when suddenly the rubber hits the road, and your life is moving. Uh, uh, you, something has happened, something is alive. Uh, that, uh, that is the feeling of grace. Um, other people have different meanings to it, but I'm just connecting all the different dots here so nobody's left out. <coughs> so let's take a look at our map, and we have our little journeyer, our soul seeker here, who's, um, excuse me a minute, uh, who, as you see, has always has got a divided mind, and he's looking at the path ahead uh, in the field of time, which means past and future. Uh, everything is pointing towards the future or towards the past. And there are two streams. One is the stream of the world, which you could call the objective world of it out there, and the subjective stream of me in the world. So there's me in the world in the world. So like I'm in the world, uh, like Mr. Bean, he's just like dropped into the world and he runs around trying to figure out where he is, you see. So we, we're we conditioned to believe that we're in this field of time as a separate self, as a me. And this is the, this is the assumption of reality in the West. This is the Western reality that we, a womb that we're born into and we don't question just like in the 50s, I wrote about this the other day with uh, these cigarette ads, and in the 50s, 40s, 30s, on up to doing that whole time, nobody questioned that cigarettes were bad for you. So everybody smoked. So the reality was never questioned. And the same thing here, the reality that this field of time is the only reality is, is an unquestioned assumption. The, the belief that I am a thing, a separate thing, in time, like a marble in a pink, in a, uh, one of these uh, uh, ball, these light, the, what do you call them, tables where you hit the ball and it runs around making hitting lights, you know, uh, I can't think, ping pong, no, it's not ping pong, ping ball, I don't know, but that we, we see the world, we see ourselves as a little steel ball running around trying to hit the lottery. But most of the time we don't. So um, this this idea of uh, hitting the lottery or finding that moment or when George Costanza in Seinfeld uh, found the parking spot or when the lights turned green, uh, we all had this feeling. It was a feeling, and most and, and uh, people just our thank you Jesus moment uh, when everything suddenly uh, adjusts so that. The way is clear, and we just don't feel any obstacles. Vroom, you know, and then right away the obstacles come back and back, and, you know. So this is constantly going on. But what we're looking at here is, uh, and I've titled this uh, "Your Moment of Zen." I think John Stewart started this, and and Trevor Noah is picking it up. Uh, but the, but what John Stewart put on was not what he called it a mo "Your Moment of Zen," but it really isn't a moment of Zen. It's just a moment. <laughs> that he wanted to pick out that kind of like uh, explained more than just the moment. It was kind of like a moment that had legs to it, that kind of expanded and showed more than just the moment. 
Uh, and in, in a way, that is, but we're, we're going to look a little deeper than that. Um, so when these two rivers meet occasionally, when the subjective me and the objective world become one, that is a moment of Zen. Uh, and when that happens, it is a transformative moment. Uh, we never, we don't forget it. Uh, because if that, but as soon as that happens, the inertia of me and the separate sense of self comes back rushing in and wraps that moment up in its interpretation of reality and says, oh, wow, I was really lucky. Or God uh, answered my prayer. Or uh, I'm enlightened. <laughs> And uh, now where am I? I got to go out and you know, and uh, I got to go out and be a guru. Uh, but these moments of Zen are when the two rivers merge, and when they merge, insight happens. There's a feeling of being at totally at home. Love happens. Creativity happens. Um, there is an effect to this that uh, that we recognize. And also, when we have this moment of Zen where the two rivers meet, there is no me there or here. If you put a T in front of here, it's there. So there's the feeling of no separate me there or here. You see, there is just this. And it, there's no boundaries to it. I had a, I can share this with you, I had an experience, I'll say a powerful moment of Zen, uh, in the 70s, I was driving a uh, meat truck. <laughs> I was a fallen yogi, and I was a uh, vegetarian driving a meat truck. I may have been the only vegetarian meat truck driver in the, in the world. However, I, would, uh, I was delivering meat to North of Virginia, and I would stop by the Casey Institute. And one time I stopped there, went into the library, and... Uh, I was looking for a book, and there was a receptionist there, and I said, uh, where is such a such a book? And when I looked in that, there was a woman older than me. She may have been in her 60s then, 50s, I don't know. Uh, and when I, when I looked at her, uh, my, the personality that I had when I walked in there fell off, and it was just like um, icicles falling off of the roof in the spring, you know, at the winter, and the, and the icicles are hanging off of the roof, and suddenly there's a thaw, and whoosh, it all falls. Well, suddenly my personality, the me, the separate me, just fell off, and I was at one with her, and I knew her as I knew myself. So there was a sense in, in relationship, and her name was Ruth. Um, and I just immediately, uh, now I, you can put kind of like, you can frame that, maybe this was a uh, reincarnated soul, I don't know what, but, you know, but what I'm interested, what I'm talking about here is the exact experience of it, so that whenever I would uh, stop, go back to Norfolk, to Virginia Beach to deliver meat, I would stop in and see her, and uh, I would always drop back into that uh, space of oneness and uh, uh, a space without boundaries. There was no her and no me. Uh, and this, this, is a, this is either a definition of lovers or friends. Uh, but it, it, we were not lovers, we were friends. But even that doesn't fit the definition. But the, what I'm trying to explain here is that this, these moments are, are like sinkholes. And uh, if you step in one, um, it's, you can't plan it. It's always a surprise. So a Zen moment is always going to be a surprise. Uh, it cannot be programmed or, or an act of will. So me, my separate sense of self with my personal will, cannot create a Zen moment. Yet the Zen moment always feels, when we have one, is that it was somehow divine intervention or something, something exterior power, uh, the self or the cosmos or something uh, is involved here because there's a sense of no boundaries. And we have these moments all the time, but we don't really have a map in which to understand them. Uh, they can be small, like a firefly flicker. 
It could be a big one, like the lights coming on. Uh, it can stay on for a while. Uh, and the, uh, uh, but, but then the, we, we, we can lose it because the inertia or the karma of our separate sense of self and our belief in ourself as being separate pulls us back out of that eternal now, back into time, and then that moment becomes a, something that happened in the past, or now it's going to be the promised land or something in the future. Uh, but then we can't, either we, we try to get to it in the future or try to restore the past, we can't make it happen again. Until one day we give up the struggle and we fall back into it. So that's another sign of a Zen moment, it's when there is no struggle. Uh, if you're struggling or striving uh, to find oneness, uh, you just create more duality. Um, you just create more me here and more me, uh, and, and more me not there. Let's put it that way. When you're in this duality, uh, me is in here and there's no me there. But when the, we fall into the sinkhole or into the Zen moment, there is the uh, sense of me being here and me being there. So I'm here, here, you see. Everything is here. There is no there. There is in time, you see. There is the next moment or, or the last moment. But now is just here, here, here. Now Ram Das wrote a book on this, Be Here Now. Uh, this whole idea of just being here. And the problem with this is that our culture is conditioned to make us believe that we are just in time. Now we do have a field of time, but it is not the, it, it is, uh, what happens in our culture is that we believe it's the only field. That there is no now dimension, there is no eternal now, or eternal now being here. Uh, that dimension does not exist in our conditioned view of reality in this material world. When you live in a material world, you live in a world of time, because material form things exist in time. You can, and we only know them because they're moving in time. You see, if something is not moving in time, we can't see it. We can only see movement and things moving in time. Everything is impermanent, has a birth and a death, you see. So everything in the material world is in time, and our culture has cut off, uh, ever since the Middle Ages, has cut off this dimension uh, to now, which opens up occasionally, but we can't fit it back into our map. So it, it really doesn't exist. And when it does exist, uh, we call it a miracle or, uh, uh, or a psychosis or we're labeled as being crazy because no one else can see it. And uh, it doesn't fit. So the map has an inertia like algae on a pond. You clear a little Zen moment in the pond and you can see your soul in it you lift your hand up and the algae comes back over and you look back and it's gone. You see. So the, the map of the field of time uh, is like that. So anybody who, but, but our hearts, you see, are always looking for this clear water in the algae or this Zen moment, this eternal now. And when we do find it, uh, we can't sustain it because the inertia of the algae and our sense of separation, which means, which in our culture means you exist. This is the irony of our culture, is that we are, the imperative is to be an individual, a free individual with choices, you see, a unique being, you see. But when, we, when that is the goal, that creates a sense of being separate. So I can only be sep a unique individual when I feel separate from the rest of the world and I'm in competition with the rest of the world. So this, the irony is that the, our sense of suffering comes from being separate from the world, being out of sync with the world, being in the argument with the world, conflict with the world, and yet we are compelled by the imperative of our culture to be separate. You see the, the, the catch-22? I must be separate to be an individual, but my, my, my drive to be separate creates the suffering 
that I want to get out of by being an individual. So we're in a take. We're in a. This puts us into a a tape loop, a double bind, uh, which is best illustrated by the snake eating its own tail. You see, it creates a vortex out of which we cannot get. So this and this is all because the map we have to go by does not include the dimension of now. All we have is a horizontal beam. We don't have this vertical beam of now. That is always now. This, this vertical beam and the horizontal meet right here. And that is what I'm describing as a Zen moment where the two streams meet and become one water. Two streams going to the one uh, think they're separate from each other, but when they touch each other in a moment of love or inspiration or a Zen moment or a sinkhole moment or whatever, the water is the same water. And it's always the same water. That with that, uh, and the taste of the same water, and this is what we talk about all the time, about uh, uh, stepping, being in the shoes of the other, you see. Uh, seeing the uh, seeing ourselves from the other, you see, is seeing the same water. So it's all one water. It's all being, but our map creates two str two streams that are constantly trying to come back together because it's one water, but they can't because of the uh, inertia and the conditioning of our particular reality map. But this is all changing in this in this age we're coming in now. Um, you know this. This uh, what I'm talking about now is is coming up everywhere. Like uh, green, you know, when you plug a lawn, uh, and uh, it's, the the grass is it's all brown, and you plug it with green spouts, and those little green shoots come up. They're all separated, and it looks like well, it's still brown. But then you come back after a month, and it's all green. So there are green shoots of Zen. Of uh, this, of this now, of this different, of this new map that includes uh, this boundary, bound, boundarylessness, this being here now, this this uh, new new uh, orientation to reality is happening all over, but uh, it hasn't reached the tipping point yet where everything changes. So there's still this war going on, this conflict going on between the old map of the separate streams and uh, the, the search for the one stream. And uh, this is called mysticism, it's called non-duality, it's uh, yoga, it's Buddhism, it's mystical Christianity, it's, Gnost it's Gnosticism in Christianity. Um, there are all different traditions and strains of this uh, with different names and different words, but it's but the experience of it, when it happens to you, is always the same. So experientially, it's the same, but then, but then the, uh, the self comes back and wraps it up in a tradition that it can understand, uh, thinking that it's different from other traditions. But uh, this, So this talk today is when the two rivers merge, your, in, your me, your separate sense of self, and the external world, that is your moment of Zen. Uh, zen, basically, uh, the way I understand it and practice it, is not a tradition or a religion or Buddhism or any of that. It is a uh, discovery of uh, these moments in my everyday life. Uh, and it's through these moments that my insight or inspiration comes. Uh, and... I can share that with you, and I'm just calling them Buddhas in your landfill. So a Buddha in your landfill is a Zen moment in your landfill. So we'll end it with that, and I'm glad the internet is back up and I'm live again. So I'll see you uh, this evening at 5 o'clock. It's martini time. And I don't know what we're going to talk about yet, but we'll see.